So this week I saw a blog posted by a college athlete, and she's, she wrote that all college coaches will yell and scream at you. That's part of their job. Um, and I disagree with this sentiment. Um, but unfortunately, I think it's a sentiment that uh, is shared by many, if not most, people around sports, and especially competitive athletics. Uh, that, you know, if a coach is not yelling and screaming at players, then that coach isn't really coaching. Um, and, and I see it in comments made about coaches um, and their behavior on the sideline. We tend to uh, glorify or appreciate coaches um, who are really uh, demonstrative and vocal. Uh, you know, the coaches that get the most praise uh, on TV from, from the media seem to be the coaches that spend the most time walking on the floor in the middle of the action to yell and scream at players. Um, and the coaches that... Uh, you know, sit more or less silently on the sideline. If they're not winning a championship, then they're criticized for not doing anything. You know, even when Phil Jackson did win championships uh, without being too demonstrative on the sideline and spending a lot of time, you know, seated and allowing his players to play, he was still criticized for, you know, not doing anything, not really coaching, and the players running the team for him. Uh, you know, and it's... it's uh, measure of the respect for a coach in terms of how much a coach is criticized for this. So when uh, LeBron James goes into a huddle and starts talking in a huddle, uh, you know, David Blatt is criticized that he has no control over his team, uh, you know, he's not really coaching, LeBron James is really the coach and, and stuff like this. But then when you show the Spurs bench and you show Tony Parker going into a huddle and leading a huddle and Popovich allowing him, well, that's because Popovich empowers his players and, uh, you know, gives leadership to the players. And that's really what we should be striving for. So the narrative changes based on the coach and the, the way the coach is perceived from outsiders. Uh, you know, people wanted to criticize Blatt when he was coaching Cavaliers. So that was a sign of disrespect. That was a sign of his lack of ability. People love Greg Popovich now. So when Parker does it, it's a sign of how much... Uh, Popovich has empowered the players and it's a sign of their players intelligence so on and so forth um, so Popovich because of his success tends to be above criticism uh, but if that's a less successful coach say uh, Blatt who hadn't yet had any success in the NBA uh, you know then he's easily criticized as well he's not doing his job he has to have the players coach for him because we expect um, a coach to be the one up yelling, screaming, ranting, raving, running on the court, you know, screaming at players, directing players. That's what we've come to expect as coaching behaviors. And that creates a really uh, negative environment and, and negative expectations for players uh, when the expectation is when you go to practice or play a game, you're going to be uh, yelled at and screamed at uh, by your coach. Uh, and oftentimes, to me, a lot of the yelling and screaming that we see by coaches is simply a, a lack of better alternatives uh, in, uh, com combined with insecurity uh, and oftentimes a lack of another way to communicate. Uh, you know, so uh, one of my favorite examples that I saw in a high school game, a girl, you know, was going in, she committed a turnover and the high school coach yells so that the whole gym can hear him and says, you know, player, how can you possibly do that? We practiced that yesterday. So, one, he gives no information to the player. He didn't give the player a tool to change her behavior the next time that that situation happened in that game. Um, really, all he was doing was attempting to embarrass that player in an effort to make it look like he's doing his job and therefore it's the player's fault and not his own. And that's become acceptable behavior uh, by coaches. You know, we, I hear and see this a lot in games and, and the feedback from coaches is very rarely instructional or informational uh, or positive. Uh, you know, so there's a certain, uh, certain benefit to just giving positive feedback even after a mistake. Um, there's definite benefits to giving information or instructional feedback, um, especially after a mistake or hopefully before a mistake happens. Um, you know, so uh, 
trying to instruct players to get into a proper position or to look for a certain thing or um, you know against a certain defense to look for a certain action something like that so that you not only not only instruct but you can prevent a future mistake because of that instruction but instead most of the feedback becomes negative and it almost becomes blaming um, and that's a really negative environment for a player to constantly be blamed publicly loud enough for everybody in the gym can hear when a player makes a mistake most of the time the player knows that he or she made that mistake you know if, if I'm playing and I throw the ball out of bounds I know I made a mistake now I might think that my teammate was somewhat involved in that mistake um, and maybe I say something to my teammate because you know he went one way and I thought he was going the other way and so I need to discuss with him where our breakdown was and maybe I think it was my fault maybe I think it was his fault but but we're aware that there was a mistake there um, so then the coach yelling, hey, don't throw the ball out of bounds. You know, we worked on that yesterday. You're supposed to throw it to your teammate. Um, you know, it doesn't add anything. All it does is make us look bad, make us feel worse. Uh, you know, and, and it's basically the coach feeling as though he needs to do something um, to coach. Uh, you know, and by yelling and screaming, he appears to be coaching he appears to be using you know his authority um, you know even though there's really no information there and that's not really coaching um, so I think it's sad when a college player will acknowledge that uh, every coach will yell and scream at you um, and that that's part of their job because while I do agree um, that every coach will yell and scream at players and while there are certain circumstances that might dictate um, yelling and screaming being the proper behavior um, for that to be the overriding behavior or the expectation for players when they join a team uh, I would say that's a reason why players are tending to drop out of sports at earlier ages um, you know why do you want to sign up to play a sport only to get yelled at by a coach you know why not go skateboard in the park where there's no coaches and no way to tell you that you're doing it wrong you know why not go ride dirt bikes or snowboard or do some other activity that's typically not coached so you don't have to deal with some adult telling you that you're doing something wrong every time you get to just go have fun and if you make a mistake you figure out what the mistake was and you try again and then you can continue having fun um, so I think again we need to think about what our expectations are for players or for coaches um, and if we really do expect yelling and screaming as a normal behavior and something that should be expected on a daily basis, I think we've done something wrong in sports and especially at the youth level.